One advantage of using a powerful compositing program like Nuke is the ability to create effects that you might normally create in a 3D program like Maya. For example, you might normally render motion blur or depth of field, but you can apply those in Nuke instead and save a lot of time in some cases. For example, we'll use this render create in Maya to apply an artificial depth of field and even a rack focus. Let's take a look at that. This is just an open EXR sequence, and the sky is black because there's just empty space back there in Maya. To add a sky inside Nuke, I simply merged the image sequence with a constant, which has a solid color. Now, this footage does include a depth channel, which we can use in combination with a Z to focus node to create the depth of field. I know there is a depth channel there by looking at the green dash on the bottom right of the node. Now, initially, you can't see that depth channel inside the viewer. Normally, when you run your mouse over the viewer, you'll see the red, green, and blue values and the alpha values. And those are red out right here, but there's no Z. Now, normally, if you press the A key inside your viewer, you'll see the alpha channel. There's the alpha. However, if you change the second menu here from RGB alpha to another channel, like the Z channel, you can see it right there in the viewer. In this case, the Z depth channel is called CamZ depth render camera dot Z. The important part is the dot Z. I know that's the depth. There is now the Z channel. Assuming that I've switched the second menu, and also I'm on the A on the third menu, which is controlled by the A hotkey. If I run my mouse over it now, the part that's normally alpha right here, the white readout, will tell me the values of my Z channel. Now this is going to vary based on what renderer you use to render out the depth channel. But in my case, the parts of the model that are close to the camera have values in Z that range from, say, 2 to 3. Parts that are medium distance are around 16. And parts that are further away have values of around 24. Now in this case, the empty space has a value of 0. Now even though there's quite a range in values there, most of it just looks white. And that's because Nuke supports super white values. In other words, the values can go above the standard 0 to 1. But the values are there and we can use them with the Z to focus node. There are issues with interpreting the Z values correctly. With this footage, it's going to be a problem to have a 0 Z value wherever there's empty space. For us, values that are smaller should be closer to the camera. That's OK. We can doctor the Z channel to get us the results we want. One way to do that is to apply a shuffle and then merge the result with another constant. Let's give it a try. With no node selected, I'll right mouse button click and choose Channel Shuffle. Then I'm going to hook that up to the Read1 node. Let's take a look at the shuffle parameters. By default, the RGBA of input 1 is being exported as RGBA. However, I can change that first menu down to that depth channel. Then you'll see it says Z. That will send the Z values out through the red, green, blue, and alpha channels. That'll make it easier to combine the Z with some other input. In fact, the next thing I'll do is create a merge node. So right mouse button click with nothing selected and choose Merge. Merge. You can also press the M hotkey. I'll just attach the A input to the shuffle. I'll create a constant next. In this case, I can go to the Image Constant node. This will create a solid color. Then I'll attach the B pipe of the merge to the constant. Now, the constant can create a solid color. However, you can also use it to simply hold a very specific value. Now, going back to our original render, remember that the empty area has a zero Z depth value. What would be great is to have that area have an even higher value so it's even farther back in terms of the Z channel. So if the distant wall is around 24, let's make that really far distant empty space have a value of 30 for Z. So I can go to the constant 2 node and open up the parameters. And then instead of picking a color through the color wheel or the eyedropper, I can go to the 4 button and enter specific values into red, green, and blue. In this case, I'll enter 30. So 30, 30, 30. Let's take a look at the merge result from merge 2. And here, because we've shuffled this into the RGB, I need to make sure to go back to that view. I'm going to press the A key again. I can see that the RGB runs from around 2 or 3 in the foreground area to around 16 in the middle ground where the house was to 30 in what was empty before. Now let's combine that with our original image sequence so we can make it out of focus. 
So this is a great place for a shuffle copy. So right mouse button click, channel, shuffle copy. I'm going to connect the one pipe into the first merge with the original image sequence and the two pipe into our doctor to Z information. And then I'll grab the viewer and reconnect that at the bottom there. Let's look at the shuffle copy. I want the one input, which is our original image sequence, to provide the red, green, blue, and alpha. So I'll make sure those are all checked in a diagonal fashion. So I'm going to set the second menu at the bottom right to other layers, depth. Depth is the standard Z channel for Nuke. In fact, you'll see when I switch it, it'll say Z right here as an output channel. I simply need one of the channels coming in from input two, and red is fine. Actually, red, green, and blue are identical, so I can simply just use red. Now we can grab a focus node and actually create the out of focusness. So right mouse button click. This is under filter, Z to focus. It's similar to a blur, but it requires a Z channel. I'll connect the input pipe to the shuffle copy node and then plug the viewer into it. Now it's going to work right away, but there are some things you need to adjust to make sure that the blurriness is appropriate. The first thing to check is to make sure the depth channel menu is set to the correct incoming Z channel. In this case, we are actually using depth.z, so that's perfect. Next thing to check is the math. Again, every renderer may output a slightly different style of Z information. Therefore, there are a number of different presets that apply different mathematics to interpret the Z values differently. In this situation, though, we can just change this menu to depth. We altered the depth information to the shuffle node, the merge node, and the second constant. But we know what the values are, so we can use them as is to represent distance from camera. Now, in terms of what's in focus, what's out of focus, and the degree of blurriness, there's some other parameters you can set. For example, the focus plane is the distance from camera that is in focus. So, for example, if I set this to a low value like 2 and give it a moment to render, then the part that's mostly in focus is going to have a low Z value, which in our case is this foreground wall. I set it to a higher number like 24. The area in focus is the part that carries values of 24. So you can pick where that point of focus is. You can also control the amount of blurriness on the part that's out of focus. You can do that by adjusting the size. The size is the filter that's applied to average the image and create the fuzziness. So a higher number here creates more fuzziness on the part that's out of focus. The lower the value, the less fuzziness. The maximum is related to that. The maximum is the maximum size of the filter that's used for the part that is the most out of focus, the part that's the furthest away from the focal plane. So you can see that when I've raised size and especially raised the maximum, that the foreground has become much blurrier. Another way to fine tune the result is to adjust the depth of field parameter. Depth of field controls the size of the area that's in focus. So a larger number here will give you a, a wider or a longer focus range from the camera. So if I raise it to a very high number, more and more things are in focus. A lower number, like zero, means that the area of focus is very narrow. I'm going to try a slightly larger number, 0.5. Now what's fun here is you can actually animate this to create a rack focus. For example, let's say that I want the foreground to be in focus on an early frame. So I'll go to frame 10. And I can key the focus plane parameter changing. So let's say at frame 10, I want to make the focal plane, say, 2.2, which is a foreground. And then key that by right mouse button, clicking over the animation menu button and choosing set key. And then go to a later frame, say 38, and shift that focus plane to a number that's further away. So let's say 18, which is a value at the far wall of the building. As soon as I enter a new number, I get a new keyframe. So here is frame 38, where the building is in focus, the foreground's out of focus. On frame 10, we have the opposite. And since this is animated, this will shift over time. Even though the viewer is going to take a few seconds to render each frame because of the heavy blur, it can still be more efficient than having to render out the depth of field through the 3D program. In fact, I'm going to jump ahead and show you a result rendered out through a right node so you can see the final result of the rack focus.
All right, so I've written out this particular network through a write node as an image sequence, and I've opened it back up with an external viewer. Let's play it back so we can see the rack focus. So you can see it starts from the foreground and racks to the background. In other words, foreground starts in focus, and then that focus shifts to the background. So here we've used a depth channel, which is commonly supported by 3D programs, in combination with a few constant nodes, a couple of merge nodes, and a shuffle and a shuffle copy, along with a Z to focus node to create a depth of field effect as part of the composite. 